That's what David Beckham sounds like when he's having a shower. Did you notice that his voice got deeper after over time? With David Beckham's voice? Yeah. Well, that happens as you get older. Didn't he? I think he went to a, a school to get his voice deeper. Cause it I'd was, like to be. I'm sure yeah. I've really enjoyed my time in Los Angeles. <laughs> I broke my leg every game. Every game. Every game. I'll bend it like Beckham. <laughs> I'll bend it, bend it like me, kids. <laughs> Stay in school. <laughs> if you're wondering who that is, that's David, David Beckham. David Beckham. <laughs> my lovely wife, Victoria. It's time for our annual lunch. <laughs> oh, man. Do you know that Victoria Beckham's uh, clothing business is going out of business, apparently? Is it? Apparently. There's a lot, there's a lot of them, uh, them two Bob clothing things, though, right? Just... How dare you? How dare you? How dare you? You've changed. Ellie's changed you. <laughs> Two bar clothing <laughs> business. How dare you? Yeah. That's Victoria Beckham. My lovely wife, My Victoria. Lovely wife. Look at this clobber. <laughs> Look at this quality. Look at this quality sh- jacket. Sh- Herring bone. Herring bone. Very nice. <laughs> what a nice skirt for your wife, sir. Nice skirt for your wife. <laughs> what about bend it like me? <laughs> oh, man. Oh, dear. Did you ever... <laughs> did you ever look at it? No, not what you think I was going to say. What? Did, have you ever seen any of the club that's gone out of business? Well, what about um, Ed Hardy? That was a thing, wasn't it? That was a thing. You used, to wear, you used to wear a lot of that. And the, who was the other bloke like that? Uh, Ed Hardy. Uh, Von Dutch. Von Dutch, that's <laughs> right. Von Dutch, that's right. right? Yeah. I, I feel like Von Dutch is somehow... Who, that woman that sang, all I want to do is have some fun. I feel like that's connected in some way, but it can't be, can it? Who, who was that? Yeah, that... that. Um, Cheryl Crow, Cheryl Crow, yeah. Crow. Was she married to Von Dutch at some point? She, uh, <laughs> yeah, she changed her name to uh, uh, Cheryl Dutch. Yeah, there you are then. My old Dutch. My old Mrs. My old Dutch. Dutch. My old Dutch Victoria will do you a <laughs> lovely pair of slacks. <laughs> nice pair of slacks and a lovely blouse. <laughs> Oh man, clothing business. Yeah, yeah. Do you ever? Did you ever uh, work in the uh, when you were a cheery Cockney in the East End? Did you ever uh, sell clothes? Were you ever in the rag trade? I was kind of in the rag trade as far as breaking into sh- stores. That's what I meant. Did you ever steal any clothes? I, tons of gear. Yeah, but Malcolm had a clothes shop. Malcolm uh, had that clothes shop in Kings Road. Yeah, it was various names when i first met him it was called let it rock it was telling and teddy boy stuff right and then it went on to be uh that um uh, sex no it wasn't sex straight away it was uh, no i was just saying that it took me a while to have sex with him yeah but then uh <laughs> my lovely wife <laughs> lovely look, <laughs> look at that herring bone <laughs> <laughs> feel the quality of that lining let me put my herring bone in there. <laughs> Ah, very nice. Mm, that's very nice. Yeah. What a lovely, lovely pair of shoes. Match that. Accessories. <laughs> and, a, and a beautiful hat. Oh, man. Um, have, you, have you, you haven't introduced me yet. I know. People think it's David Beckham. <laughs> People think David Beckham is here. Yeah, well, that's Scottish accent. Yeah. yeah. Oh, they've got David Beckham on the show today. He, he didn't only learn to make his voice deeper. He yeah. got different accents. David, oh, David Beckham, I remember when I was playing for England. <laughs> I was fantastic. So many World Cups were very challenging. <laughs> oh, do you remember that time when he... Uh, was you a fan of World Cup? Did you support England or you didn't? No, I don't, I don't have any of that kind of horrible kind of Scotland-England hatred. Too many of my friends are English. I, yeah. But, I, um, but I, I suppose when England were playing, I would kind of root for them to win. Unless they were playing against Scotland, yeah. and then that would make no yeah. sense at all. Yeah, do you remember that time when uh, he, he fouled the Argentinian and he got sent off? Who, uh, uh, Beckham? Yeah. yeah. Did he cry? Oh, no, that was Paul Gascoigne that cried. Yeah, it was, uh, I think, I think it was, the, was it Terry Venables who was the coach? I don't know, whatever. Terry Butcher. Remember Terry Butcher? No, who was that? He was a big English uh, centre-half, I think. Did you see a great documentary on Netflix? 
like with 10 million other documentaries. There's a lot of documentaries on Netflix. You're going to need to be more specific. Is it uh, one of where the, the priests killed that nun? No, but I've I've seen I want to see that one. Is yeah. that any good? Oh, it scares you. There's a bit in it where they have a nun in an attic. Are you going to introduce me at some point or not? It doesn't matter. David Beckham. Want... All right. Well, well, I tell you what, I was very much... <laughs> Me and my beautiful son, Brooklyn, uh, we, we called him Brooklyn, because you know they named their kids after where they were conceived. It, what, Brooklyn where? Brooklyn, New York, that's where he was conceived, Brooklyn. My lovely son, Brooklyn, was conceived in Brooklyn. I thought he was going to call him Ruslip Lido. <laughs> Wasn't he born there? <laughs> in the car park? In the car, car park, dumpster, all my kids. In a little caravan? Yeah, my caravan, that's another one. <laughs> Back of the shop, my little my little son. Back of the shop. <laughs> all right, all right. I love this show. <sighs> this is better than I. Now you've been here four years. When your show was in three the years. other three years, just starting the fourth year now. All right. Well, because I listen every day, and yeah, of course you do. And when you were in the other place, I didn't like the other place so much. It was too corporate. But this seems like a proper radio station. Yeah. What? What? What one was the other place? It was I don't know. It was in the E Entertainment building. Oh, or something. In, when yeah. it was Indie One Hundred Three One. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, I liked that radio station. Didn't that go turn into it a went bust? It turned into a mariachi station or something, didn't it? Yeah, they ch changed it overnight because right. they didn't have to pay anyone, and it was that time, two thousand eight. There was a few scenarios where it ended. There was a there was a stock market crash apparently in two thousand eight. Two thousand eight. Yeah. Apparently, yeah. I saw that in a documentary on Netflix. You were going to talk. You were going to talk to me about a documentary on Netflix. What about? Yeah, um, uh, uh, Robbie Robertson, the manager. Oh, uh, Bobby Robson. Bobby Robson. I haven't sorry. seen it yet, but I am going to watch. Have you watched it? Very good. Yeah. Very good. I just watched the one about. Uh, it's called something about Generation Wealth. Have you seen that? No. Uh, break your heart. Break your heart. About who's got the money and who ain't. Well, not some. Not so much that. More about the kind of weird kind of pathological love of money that that people have it's it's strange mm. and and what people think money is going to do there's this kind of real twisted old german financier who's like on the lamb from the the u.s tax man and stuff he has to stay in germany he said if you have if you think money is going to solve all your problems then you have never had any money i thought well actually that's true yeah. i think because yeah. you you have been rich and been poor any difference me? Yeah. Well, it all depends what you call rich. Well, it all depends what you call poor as well, doesn't it? I mean, that's the thing. It's all subjective beyond a certain point. Um, I think uh, I only really started making a bit of dosh around 96. Prior to that, I really didn't make any money. It was kind of a, you know, a sniffle here, a sniffle there. Well, you never made any money in the pistols? Not originally, no. But you'll make we, money we, on it now. Well, we make a bit, but, yeah. we, you know, it's uh, we had one album. Yeah. There's not a lot of catalogue. There's a cup. Pretty good album, though. Yeah, but it don't... It's time for, uh, you know, like, I just saw Bohemian Rhapsody. It's time for a Pistols movie like that. And let's cast all, like, young people to play you. <laughs> I think it'll be, right, let's cast this, right. So you, I think you've got to be, uh, what's his name? The, the Star is Born. Uh, that guy. Bradley Cooper. Bradley Cooper plays young Steve Jones. That'll be all right. Don't you think? He'd have to gain a bit of weight. No, no, I'm talking about early oh, on. Oh, when, yeah. when I was a stud? Yeah, in the Pistols. Yeah. Right, so Bradley Cooper. And then Lydon could be played by... Um, who's that? Uh, Kristen Wiig. You know that girl that does uh, the stuff on Saturday? She, she'd be good, actually. I don't know who that is. Oh, she's really good. She's very talented. Uh, and then, uh, let's see, Sid. Who plays Sid? Oh, it'd be hard. Because you want to be respectful, but at the same time, you want to be accurate. Well, he's dead. Who cares? Well, I, I imagine quite a few people care. No, they? he's a good he's a good lad. It, yeah. it was sad. It was it sad. It was terribly sad. He was only, what, 21, said? He was, yeah, 21. Jeez. And I didn't realise that at the time, because we were all that age. Got a little yeah, bit older. Yeah, you don't older. think about it. I know. Just uh, bizarre, but... um, I know. It's horrible. Do you know who could play Cookie, though? Is... I think you want someone like. Uh, did you see that bl that guy that won the Oscar for that thing? What's his name? Uh, the Oscar for that thing. Yeah, three billboards outside of. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that guy, he's really good. Yeah. Him or Bill Macy. 
yeah. or, or Benedict Cumberbatch because he can do anything. What a bleeding name! Is that his real name? Oh, fuck, I don't know. Oh, 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 did he swear? No, no. I said fuck. Oh, oh, well, fuck. Ah, bend it up, bend it up. Oh. My lovely wife Victoria. <laughs> Have you, you still haven't introduced me. You my lovely wife Victoria. <laughs> I thought I did. No, you didn't. No. Yeah. Just, just go ahead and say it. Go ahead, go on. You're dying for me to say it. No, I'm, I'm not. I'm just, I'm feeling a little weird now because I think everybody's like, <laughs> well, David Beckham sounds really weird, and I think he might have sworn accidentally, but he didn't actually, for legal reasons, actually swear. I never connected with a K sound, by the way, so that's what, that's how you prove that I didn't swear if this ever comes to court. Okay. Right. Okay. I just went. Ah. Ah. Um, I'm introducing my guest right now, Craig Ferguson. Oh, lovely you, my lovely. lovely. Right, there you are, you said, now I just feel more comfortable okay. now that you've said it. And that's fine, you don't have to say anything else. Just, you said my name, okay. and then that's fine. Now, we were cast in the Pistols movie. Come a bum. Be- Benedict Cumberbatch. There's a lot of these toffs doing very well at the acting. Benedict Cumberbands, uh, that guy, uh, the... That Freddie Mercury guy. No, he's, uh, he's uh, American, I think. Oh, is he? I think so, yeah. Is he American? Yeah. yeah. He, uh, that, that movie's really good, I gotta say. I wasn't even a real fan of Queen after, like, maybe the second album, but uh, that movie's really good. Yeah. It's all about the build up to the last 15 minutes, really, isn't it? But I liked all the little stuff in between. Yeah, no, I like, I like that he was so, uh, that accurate impersonation he did of Freddie Mercury was great. With his Amsteds. Yeah. His Amsteds. <laughs> Amsterdam means teeth. Yeah, right. Thanks, David. Thank you. <laughs> Amsterdam means teeth. My lovely trouble and strife. Why? <laughs> Victoria told me that. Oh, you man. Do you go back to London a lot? You've not changed your accent at all. I haven't been back since 2008. <laughs> was the last time I was there. Well, because of the stock market crash. No, we did a tour. I mean, you know what's funny? We did like three months tour of festivals. Yeah. We was based in London. And on the weekends, we go and do... Slovenia or wherever, do a festival. And by the beginning of the tour to the end of the tour, we only got half the money we thought we was going to get because it crashed right in the middle of it. I hate that. But I I feel like maybe that's kind of accurate for the Sex Pistols, though. It feels like that's the way it it had to be. Well, no one cares. I think that's not true. No one cares. I think I cared. No, I think that's You know how hard it is to be in that band? I wanted every bleeding penny. It was a pain in the ass. No, nah, you can't have that. Didn't Herb Albert get a lot of it? or uh, Who got all the money? Malcolm? Herb Albert? Yeah. <laughs> 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 Who's the guy that had A&M? Didn't he have an A&M? He had A&M. Yeah, he didn't get any money. He gave you some money. No, he didn't give us anything. You're, you're thinking about uh, Richard Branston. <laughs> Branson, Brand- Richard Branson. You put a T in there, which is just not acceptable. Oh, it's not Twi- Branston. No, Branston's the pickle. Pickle. Branston pickle. Branson, virgin. Oh, he's a, the- he's a virgin. No, he is. Vir- he's the man behind virgin. He he's- might be a virgin behind that. No, I don't think he is. I think he's. Uh, I think he's probably not now. He's got a bunch of kids and stuff. He's got a few quid, isn't he? Richard Branston? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he has. He has got a lot. Mm. So you've got a show. What? Have I? The Hobo Fabulous Tour. Oh, no, well, that's what I called the tour. You, you've got to give a tour a name, haven't you? You know what? It's very confusing, though, because I thought it was HBO. Oh, because it's uh, Hobo? It looks like the HBO Fabulous Tour. No, when no. When you look at it quick. Well, don't look at it quick. You're a professional. Okay. Look at it slow. Take your time. Read. Use uh, your proper eye. Okay, wandering. Ho- hold on, hold on. Yeah. Oh yeah. It says o- o- Obo. Ho- Obo. Obo. Yeah. Fabulous. Hulk Hogan. Uh, Hulk Hogan. <laughs> <laughs> well, my lovely wife, uh, Mrs. Hogan. The Hulk Hogan Fabulous Tour. Yeah. No, it's just like the tour. It's just a stand-up tour. But it, I just thought I'd give it a name. Do you miss doing the uh, the Late Late Show? No. No. I. Th- I'm very glad I left when I did. I left in 2014, and uh, I think American pop culture turned into a garbage fire around about 20, late 2015, uh, and it's and it's kind of been that way ever since. You did that for how many years? Ten. Ten years. Yeah. It's a stressful job, it's, I would imagine. It is a stressful job. It was too. You were you were on one of the first shows, and you did the last show with yeah. me as well. Yeah. And, um, and yeah, it was a quite a stressful. It was quite a stressful job. Just the, the, the amount of hours as well. And I think 
I never found the performing of it was fine. I quite liked doing that. I enjoyed doing the performing, in fact. But the, but the corporate kind of, you have to live a very kind of hypocritical, careful life if you work in a corporation, yeah, in it. Yeah. Um, and I was willing to do that for a long time, and then I, and then I, I couldn't, uh, couldn't do that for a while. Yeah. Oh, sorry, how do I say that without saying the fa word? But um, I just, I didn't want to do it anymore. Yeah. Um, the the daily kind of because you end up being HR, you end up being you know, you know everybody comes to you with oh uh, I need a day off for this or anything. and I'm like I don't want to I don't want to run a company I yeah just, you know so I'm um, I'm glad I don't do it yeah well it was a good run it was a fine run and I'm very glad I did it and I'm proud of it and I'm I'm almost equally proud that I got out when I did yeah before you know yeah. before it got bad <laughs> or worse. And but but after that you you did something where you was wearing a waistcoat a lot. Mm, yeah. You was having a suit of a waistcoat. Suit I don't remember. You were like history. Oh yeah, I did that. Yeah, yeah. That, well, that, that was a fair cash grab. I thought. Was that on uh, A and E? No, no history. History Channel. Channel. Yeah, it was like a little talk show thing about some historical subjects. It was a, it was overproduced. There was a lot of executives involved saying, "Let's do this, let's do that," and I was like, oh, "Okay." Yeah. Is that is that like the worst part of all big stuff? You got ten blokes in suits, yeah, constantly it, well, down your think throat. Think about it. It's just like a record company. It's just like you're, you, you yeah. know, it's like. It, but instead of the executives coming into the, the mix every now and again, or or they're there all the time. Yeah, and they're saying. You know, we feel that this joke is a, you know, maybe something we'd want to avoid uh, giving the, our sponsors tonight, our banks. You yeah. know, I mean, like, I, I don't know what to say about yeah. that, you know, and, yeah. and it got relentless for me. Um, and I, I, I was tired of it. You think it's the same in England, same stuff? Or was it a little looser? I think it's, I think it's a little looser in Britain, but I also, they don't. It's not. The, it's kind of not the same, though. I mean, the, the, I mean, the, there's so much at stake here. It's such an enormous, giant, you know, liner, you know, ratings. ratings and money. There's so much more money here. Yeah. And in Britain, it's just kind of like, well, it's a job for the BBC. It's a five thousand pounds for twenty episodes, and you're like, I, I, that's not the same. Yeah. You know? You could win 25 lunch vouchers. <laughs> That's right. You could win a free hat. <laughs> Join our show later on this evening. We'll be just giving away packets of crisps. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, yeah. Well, what do you think of all the... Uh, we're going to visit the Duke. we got a, we got to pay the... Who's the Duke? The Duke of Kent. We're going to pay the rent. Oh, that's... Oh, you're such an earthy character yeah. from the East End. Look, we got to pay the Duke. Oh, well, my lovely wife, Victoria, Victoria. always says... Got to pay the old Duke, eh? She's, she's clobberless right now. Oh, what are you doing? You talking about my fashion line? Shut up, David. She's got no clobber left. Shut up, David. I'm doing fine. <laughs> Man, what's going on? You shut up, Brooklyn. And you as well, Ryslip. Yeah, Ryslip Lino. <laughs> Well, that's lovely. Isn't that a lovely song, isn't it? My wife, Victoria, loves that song. I like it. I do, David. That's my favourite song. Do you want to buy a pair of trousers, Stephen? Well, you know why she likes that song. Why is that? It's called Free Button Hand Me Down. Oh, it's about clothes? Yeah. <laughs> my favourite thing. My <laughs> lovely clothes that I make. Please buy my Victoria Beckham slacks. Available at TJ Maxx. <laughs> then we had Queen. Seven Seas of Rye. That's a great song. They do a good version of uh, that song in the Bohemian Rhapsody. Yeah. In that movie. Yeah. All, all the all the live footage, I mean, uh, the, you know, on stage kind of stuff was done really well. It was, Not, wasn't it? I don't just mean the Wembley thing. I mean the rest of it. Because normally rock and roll movies, when people, it's, it's normally bollocks. It looks yes, it is. It looks like bad. Absolute rubbish. Yeah, I've tried to make one. It's bad. Yeah. You did? No, I don't want to talk about it. Okay. <laughs> Craig Ferguson on the show. Yeah, I don't want to talk about it. And uh, before that was Alice in Chains, a song called Wood. And John Raymond from Riverside qualified for five grand on Friday. And he's also... Got, uh, what a pair of trousers. Yeah. Victoria Beckham shorts that you can wear to his events in Riverside. I can't give it away. No, uh, coming your way, culottes. <laughs> a pair of culottes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Oh, man. Would you ever wear culottes? Do you, I, you've never been much of a... You, you, I well, don't you're even quite know. fashionable. You're, you're quite fashionable. I'm looking at you now. You've yeah. got your T-shirt with a monster on it and stuff. What's culottes? Culottes is uh, it's French for uh, trousers or something, isn't it? That's pantalons. Culottes is a French trouser that looks a bit like a skirt when you wear it because it's baggy at the bottom. I think the Prime Minister of France wears them. Ah, culottes. Yeah. He, he wears them at the, G, uh, the G4 summit. That he wears them there because they're comfortable. Yeah. Because they're in there for I, a few hours. I have to sit down and discuss policy with major world <coughs> leaders and I want to look my best and feel comfortable. Yes. It's so a long, why not? It's a long meeting. It's a long meeting. Yeah, I wear my culottes and perhaps a small top. <laughs> oh man so listen you're still a vegan yeah well sort of chigan i call it now because i eat a bit of parmesan cheese and halloumi cheese which is a greek sheep's cheese it's delicious do you like goat's cheese i do actually yeah Go goat i like goat i like goat's cheese so i eat a bit of cheese but i don't eat anything else and i don't even eat much cheese but every now and again you think nah i gotta have a piece of cheese or else What's life about? How long have you been a vegan? About four or five years now. You look well. Well, it's veganism, clearly. You think it is? Um, that and Spanx and Botox, I think, is that helps as There's well. There's no way you're doing Botox. No, no. I think it's too late. Would you ever do anything to your boat race? You, um, you don't need you to. You mean face? Boat race means face. face, face you, like my, lovely, my lovely husband, David, would say. Um, no, I wouldn't do that. No, I wouldn't. Would you do that? No. I feel like if I tried, it would be like, <laughs> it'd be like trying to do up an old house with a paintbrush. It's just, it's, it's just, it's gone too far. Well, a lot of older dudes, I mean, they all do it. It's show business. There's always. I don't think I'm in show business anymore. A nip and tuck somewhere. I'd probably have, like, my. If they could take away my tummy fat, I'd do that. Well, that's called... Uh, liposuction? Yeah. Nah, Have I'm you not. ever seen a video on liposuction? No. I How don't. violent it is? There's a guy up there with a thing, and he's like... Ah, 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 ah. That's uh, you. That's like your body. Well, well, hold on a second. Now you've know you got me interested. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's no, so violent. No, if they could just, like, you know, like, just rub something on it and it would go away, I'd do that. I don't want anyone sticking tubes in me or anything, no. Yeah. Also, when you get cut open, there's a risk of infection. I don't want that. Yeah. No, I well, I think I think it's like a rake. It's like a big long tube, and they just they rake all your fat. all the fat up. Nah, nah. I think it, I think Spanx is the way to go. Spank it. <laughs> yeah, you could do that. You, you know, you, or or uh, what are Spanx? It's what the ladies wear to keep it all tucked in. Oh, tight, tight, tights. Tight tights, but around your tummy, tummy tights. Is that a thing? Or a girdle. You could wear a girdle, a Playtex 18-hour girdle. A, a, a Playtex that's cross your heart bra. Cross your heart bra and an 18-hour girdle. Oh, I forgot my girdle. Oh, I've got it on. <laughs> Remember that advert? Yeah. When we were kids. Oh, wait, we can't go. I'm not wearing a girdle. Oh, wait, I am. My 18-hour girdle. <laughs> I am. I am wearing a girdle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's how people used to talk in the 1970s. They talked about their girdles. Man. It's better times. Well, I think a lot of birds, you know, it's birds all wear them tights now. I don't know what you're talking about. They, they, they wear them walking around the street. It's like oh, workout well, gear. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, everybody dresses workout gear all the time in L.A. But I think them tights are kind of designed where they kind of keep everything. That's what I'm saying. You keep it yeah. all together. That's what yeah. I'm, that's, I'm looking for a bodysuit that I can put on in the morning and makes me look 15 pounds lighter. Yeah. That's what I'm looking for. Yeah. Uh, and then over that, a nice pair of culottes and maybe a small yeah. top. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, you told me what? that some people, like hardcore vegans, try to convert their cats to be vegans. Yeah, you haven't you heard that? Heard I have that. never heard that. Yeah, no, that's a thing. People want that, their cats to be vegans. That's not fair to cats, man. I think the cats would agree with you. They must go nuts. Yeah, well, cat, let's be fair. The cats are pretty much nuts anyway. Do you know my brother-in-law got bit by his cat? And he nearly died. You, you Google this on the internet. That's what it's called, the internet. You, um, if you get bitten by a cat, you can get septicemia. It can kill you. And I'm not talking about a lion or anything, or a, one of your large jungle predators. I'm talking about a house cat. Like, just a regular common gun. If that bites you and punctures the skin, you have to go to the doctor right away. Really? Heavy-duty antibiotics. Uh, it's dangerous. Really? Yeah. Nearly killed him. Are you a fan of, of a cat? I I liked them a lot more do you, do you when I until I heard this. Now I feel they're like. You cuddlies. had one, but you got rid of it. No, no, it's still around the cat. 
Do you leave it outside? No, you can't leave a cat outside. I'd leave him around if he... Do you, don't you have a cat? I'm not a big cat person, to be honest with you. Do you have a cat? No. What about a dog? I love dogs, but you... I don't like commitments. Right, so you don't have a dog or a cat. What about a fish? It, it's still... It's, you still got to do things for it. What about a plant? I've got lots of plants. Well, there you are then. You, I think baby steps. And I'm proud that they haven't died for a good run now. I, I really take a lot of time in watering them on time. And talking to do them. Do you talk to them? I was yeah. going to say, yeah. Do you put on different voices? Yeah, I say. What do you uh, talk to them about? You know, thanks for being green. Oh, you're very welcome. And not, <laughs> and not do you dying. Have <laughs> Hello, mate. All right. All right. Yeah, yeah I I'm just a... got a soaking. <laughs> yeah, pour some water on me. <laughs> Come on. What about put some put some? Oh, can you can't say it. Again. Put some dung around me. Yeah. Put some dung around. Some salt peter. St stick some dung around me stem. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, good times. Plant plant. Say, eh? I'm not. I, I'm into gardening now. I do a lot of gardening. Green finger. Yes, that's right. Sure, green finger. Who was that bloke on TV? You, you, you push it right in there, you get the dirt D right in it. David Bellamy, was that yeah. David? Was it him? Yeah. yeah I think it's about He was a real green thing. All you lovely little creatures, you get right down there and start feeling the, all the ants and all the little worms come up and they all come up around the plants. That's all it. lovely. That's it. Well, he was one of them British television presenters. The thing about, I've been in Britain a lot recently. I've noticed that in Britain, they don't want you to look like homogenised and clean like they have people on TV here. Like, people on TV in Britain are like, let's find the weirdest guy in town and make him the newsreader yeah. and stuff. And now, here's the news. And the guy's, like, got eyes pointing different directions and mad hair and stuff. It's very refreshing. Yeah, yeah. And they get, you know, people can be celebrities well into their 90s in Britain. Yeah, not here. No. You're over at 50. Oh, you're over at 30 here. Yeah. yeah. And, then you, and then you spend the next 20 years trying to look 30. Yeah. Mutilating yourself and injecting botulism into your wrinkly old boat. And your, uh, and your, uh, what was the one with the rake? Oh, yeah, uh, liposuction. Liposuction. Yeah. Lipius succius. That's the Roman word for Li liposuction. liposuction. I didn't know the Romans had liposuction. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, do you want to fight the lions? This is my Roman voice. I don't know. Apparently, old Romans used to talk like Gilbert Gottfried. So! You want to fight lions, <laughs> or do you want the liposuction? <laughs> uh, why is it whenever they play old movies like that, kind of Caesar and that, why are they always like with a posh English accent? Because these actors are affordable and they command dignity. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'll do the job for 40 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be very happy to play Caesar for twenty-eight pounds fifty. <laughs> uh, American actors are like, no, nah, I'm gonna need two million dollars yeah. if you want me to play Caesar. Yeah. And British actors are like, I'd be honoured to play Caesar uh, if you give me a sandwich and a place to sit down between takes. That's enough for and me. And a year's worth of lunch and vouchers. Yes, uh, if if you can get me a nice pair of culottes and maybe a small <laughs> top, uh, <laughs> that'll be enough for me. Thanks very much. Uh -huh. Oh, you're killing me. It's too vulgar to ask uh, for money. Yes. So, uh, what? The, um, the HBO Fabulous Tour. The Hobo Fabulous Tour. Look, let's just plug the dates I'm doing in LA okay. and then we can get it out of the way. You can stop pretending that it's part of the conversation, right? What is it then? There it is. Uh, here we go. April the 4th, the theatre at Ace Hotel. Oh, I'm playing a hotel. That's nice. And then April the 5th, I'm on at the Castro in San Francisco. And April the 7th, the Grove of Anaheim. Also shows in Arizona and Nevada, apparently. Do you like doing stand-up? I do, actually. I do. I like doing it a lot because um, it's just me. Do you, do, you, do you... Are you loose or do you have a set thing that you're going to do? No, I, I, I mean, I know what I'm going to do, but it's not the same every night. I mean, it's, it's not like... A, it's kind of like a set list. Like, you know, I'll do the story about the hat and then I'll do that thing where, yeah. you know, that guy's, you know, got a, the thing with his willy or something. And yeah. then... But I don't tell it the same way every night. I and then you do your David Beckham bit. Maybe that's going to be new. Well, I have new I have now. been doing it. That that I think is going to be the, yeah. in the next one because I'll, I'll do that. At the, wait, 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 on, let me plug the dates again. <laughs> uh, I'm David Beckham. I'll be appearing as an impersonation with Craig Ferguson at the theatre at Ace Hotel April fourth, April fifth, the Castro in San Francisco, 
And with my lovely wife, Victoria, the Grove of Anaheim, April 7. I thought that voice was Victoria. I thought we went into the deep voice for David Beckham. Oh, you know what? It's right now. I've wasted it. Oh, I've ruined man. it. Because, yeah, David Beckham talks like this now. <laughs> doesn't he? That's right. <laughs> One of the greatest footballers of all time. Sounded like a cartoon rabbit. He did. He did have a squeaky voice. He's a squeaky he? voice. I mean, what a gifted athlete! Though. But he it's don't amazing. sound. He don't sound squeaky anymore. Well, maybe if you've noticed. Well, maybe he smokes a pipe now. He probably smokes a pipe now. Well, that's right. I do smoke a pipe. You got a problem with that? I've got a cardigan. Old Oban. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like a, a three ounces of Old Oban and a nice clay pipe, please. <laughs> Wearing my cardigan and, and I'm slippers. He's, he's now a beloved detective on the BBC. <laughs> well, let me just say, Inspector, that I think this has been a murder. <laughs> Do you watch? I watch the old British detectives. I yeah, love them. Yeah, yeah. I love them. Well, uh, like Sweeney. No, well, I loved the Sweeney when I was a kid, but the ones now, uh, like, you can get them on uh, Amazon and stuff, is uh, Morse, but Young Morse, uh, Endeavour. Have you watched that? No. Oh, it's fantastic. It's set in the 1960s. You remember Morse, the, the detective character? John Thaw did it on the telly in Britain. He was, like, a curmudgeonly old guy that like, solved murders. Yeah. But it's, it's a prequel to that. It's set in the 1960s in Oxford when he's a young detective. 1960? Yeah, yeah. 19, well, mid-60s. Yeah, yeah. It's really good. And then the older blokes are geezers who fought in the war. Right. It wasn't one like that when I was in North yeah. Africa and yeah. all that kind of stuff. It's very, very pleasant and comforting. Nice. And there's murders every week. Apparently Oxford was a hotbed of homicide yeah, in the good. 1960s. You know what I saw on Amazon Prime a month ago, which was fantastic? Oh, Amazon Prime, oh. are you fancy? Was, uh, was uh, um, Hugh Grant playing... Yeah, playing Jeremy that. Thor. Yeah. He was great in that, wasn't so he? So good. It was fantastic. That was such a... I remember that because we were that. kids about that yeah. time, right? 74, 75, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. Man, yeah. Jeremy Thorpe, the scandal of the gay British politician. Um, and the geezer who plays, you know, the... the His the, boyfriend. The, 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 yeah, yeah. He, he was fantastic. He's very good, yeah. Okay, buddy. Is that right. it? Am I done? That's it, you're lot. It's nice to see you, pal. Nice to see you. It's, um, uh, I'll, uh, wh why don't you come and see my show at the Grove or where is it? The, well, well, the, the Ace, Ace Hotel would probably Ace. be the best well, one. Well, come to the Ace then. And it, it's a show in LA, so the guest list will be bigger than the paying audience anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Can I get backstage? Yeah, of course, yeah. And do the thing? Do the, what, free cheese nibbles and all free that? Free cheese and, and there's no coke and vegetables. There's no coke and, 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 that kind of thing anymore backstage. Them days have long gone. I'm afraid not, but you could help yourself to a beautiful piece of cheese, some crackers, and some perhaps a crackers. drink. Crackers. <laughs> a drink of a sparkly beverage. No alcohol, though. <laughs> drink responsibly. Thanks for coming by. Craig Ferguson, Jonesy's Jukebox. Do we have someone tomorrow? We don't, do we? I think it's open. Do you what, can I come back there? Yeah, tomorrow. Come back as David Beckham. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll see you later. See you later.